Welcome back to Lipid Biosynthesis on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we started the basics of cholesterol synthesis and we saw how we generate isoprenoid units or isoprenes, which were isopentanyl pyrophosphate or IPP and dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate DMAP. And ultimately, we're going to take these isoprene units and condense them into larger isoprenes. And this is going to be the topic phase three in cholesterol biosynthesis, which is going to give us squalene. Now, here on the, on the right, where we have squalene's conversion to lanosterol, this is technically part of phase four, although I'm going to show it here and then we'll cover phase four in the next video. But here, the main topic I want to talk about is the condensation of isoprene units. And also, the, these uh, condensations that I'm about to show you, I'm going to have a separate video on the mechanism of these, so um, I'll post that in this playlist at some point. Um, so make sure to check that out for the mechanism of this condensation, because it may help you to understand it to some extent. All right, the first step. I need to generate this molecule called geranial pyrophosphate. This is a 10 carbon isoprene unit because we're actually condensing two 5 carbon isoprene units. So we're going to condense one molecule of DMAP, dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate, and one molecule of isopentanyl pyrophosphate, or IPP. These reactions are catalyzed by prenyl transferases. Um, and so what they'll do is they'll just condense these. Essentially what's going to happen on IPP is you're going to have an elimination of the pyrophosphate and then that's going to catalyze a nucleophilic attack on the DMAP. Okay? We'll again show that mechanism in a separate video, but when you condense these two together as such, what you're actually going to have is the production of geranial pyrophosphate. Oops, sorry, that's my oven beeping that it's done. All right, so here's geranial pyrophosphate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this 10-carbon isoprenoid and we're going to condense it with another 5-carbon isoprene, and that is isopentanyl pyrophosphate. Again, this is catalyzed by another prenyl transferase. And when we condense this, we actually get this molecule called farnesyl pyrophosphate. Okay, so now this should be 15 carbons, and I recommend that you count them and you'll find it should be 15. All right. Farnesyl pyrophosphate is very important because it can actually be used here to make squalene, as we'll discuss in a minute. But the other thing is farnesyl pyrophosphate can be used in farnesylation reactions. Um, we will often find proteins that are farnesylated, meaning this carbon chain is actually attached to them. In fact, um, one of the molecules that is very important that's farnesylated is lamin. Lamin proteins that make up the nuclear envelope. Uh, these proteins are actually farnesylated and sometimes errors in the processing of those lamin proteins lead to diseases like progeria. So farnesyl groups are very important for that. They're also important in uh, some synthetic reactions for let's say heme A. Heme A is a form of heme that actually has a hydroxy farnesyl group attached to it. That would come from farnesyl pyrophosphate. All right, hopefully that makes sense. In terms of this synthesis though, farnesyl pyrophosphate will be consumed by squalene synthase. So squalene synthase does a slightly different type of condensation. Um, it's going to condense two farnesyl pyrophosphates together, but it's going to do so in a different fashion, so it's going to be a different mechanism than prenyl transferases. But in any case, it's going to give us this molecule, which is called squalene, which is a very large very hydrophobic molecules. You can tell it's all carbon and hydrogen, no heteroatoms on it at all. Squalene, typically when you first look at it, it's going to be shown in this extended form like this, but notice you can kind of um, fold it as such like this, and when I fold it like this, you might ask yourself what it starts to look like. Well, and it starts to look like cholesterol. It's not connected, and it doesn't have any heteroatoms like cholesterol, but it looks a little bit like the sh general shape of cholesterol. Here's the A ring, the B ring, the C ring, the D ring, and the cholesterol tail. So it turns out that, first of all, squalene, and this is actually part of phase four of cholesterol synthesis, but I'm going to include it here. Squalene is going to be epoxidated by an enzyme called squalene monooxygenase. It's going to use molecular oxygen and form an epoxide right here. So you see an epoxide form. Um, what you'll also notice is, and this is the reason they folded it like this, is there's an enzyme after 
we epoxidate squalene called 2,3-epoxysqualene cyclase. Typically, you'll just see it referred to as cyclase, um, but this is the full name. And what it's going to do is it's going to catalyze the full cyclization of this molecule because you have this epoxide here, which is activated. Each of these double bonds can actually perform a nucleophilic attack, and it will actually form a full cycle as shown right here. Now, what also happens to happen is you'll also have some methyl group shifts, some hydride shifts, but ultimately this enzyme is going to convert squalene 2,3-epoxide or 2,3-epoxysqualene into lanosterol. All right, and lanosterol is sort of the first the first intermediate in this pathway that actually looks like cholesterol. Even though we can fold squalene and squalene 2,3-epoxide into this form, this is the first molecule that we're gonna see where each of these cycles, these rings, are actually closed. And we start to see something that does look very much like cholesterol. And what we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna see the conversion of lanosterol into cholesterol. What we will also see in the next video is actually how we can actually get 7-dehydrocholesterol, which is the precursor to vitamin D in humans, which is actually a vitamin that we can actually synthesize de novo. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Hopefully it made sense, but in the next video we're gonna convert lanosterol into cholesterol. Join us then. Thank you.